We love her very much. We miss her and we want her to come home. Young, pretty. Brain stretching, doing some morning yoga. Popular on social media. This girl right here, this is what matters. That is it. Gabby Petito's disappearance and death became a national sensation. I've never seen anything like this in my years of doing this work. And drew attention to deeper issues happening in our state. More than 1,500 people are currently missing. When I saw the missing report with her face on it, uh, that Tony was missing, and that took five days for that to even, like, reach out to people. Few get the attention of Gabby Petito. Tonight, we take a look at the disparities that keep these cases in the shadows. Law enforcement's process to pursue and prioritize missing persons' cases. What can be done about the hundreds still missing? What can law enforcement, the media, and the public do to help find those who simply disappear? This is Missing in Florida, a special presentation. I'm Wendy Ryan with ABC Action News in Tampa. Tonight, I'm right outside the Carlton Reserve in Sarasota County. For weeks, this park was the backdrop in the search for Gabby Petito's fiance, and her case is why we're here tonight. With our other script stations in Florida, we take a look beyond Gabby's case and the hundreds of others who are still missing in our state. I'm Jay Cashmere with WPTV in West Palm Beach. Vulnerable populations remain especially at risk. Minorities, members of the LGBTQ community, they make up the rank of runaways and are especially at risk to trafficking and exploitation. I'm Ava Van Villen, ABC 27 here in Tallahassee. We examine the case of a woman an activist who went missing. Critics claim that her case wasn't prioritized because she was a black woman. I'm Jennifer Dela Cruz with Florida 24 Network in Hollywood Beach. These are unprecedented times when it comes to finding the missing. TikTok allowed amateur detectives to help find Petito's body, and the media focused on the story of a missing young white influencer. So, are newsrooms missing those that don't fit the Instagram profile? We start with law enforcement. There are gaping holes in the way police report and track missing people in Florida. And we're seeing a mixed bag of missing person databases, often inaccurate and out of date. But as Florida investigator Katie Legrone finds out, there is one solution other states have already adopted, but not Florida. It'll be 11 years. October 14th. Yeah. 11 years ago. Yeah. Yes. That's when Janie Duval Del Rosario last heard from her daughter. I am living day by day. Jacinia was 19 years old when she went missing from the boardwalk in Hollywood Beach. According to her mom, she told cousin she was going for ice cream. It's like the earth opened up and swallowed her alive. Jacinia's case has been cold ever since. Her name posted in a number of databases for missing people nationwide, including this one, the National Missing and Unidentified Person System, also known as NamUs. It's a federally funded online database for missing, unidentified, or unclaimed persons in the U.S. and often described by cold case experts as law enforcement's most effective and accurate missing persons database. The problem. People just aren't using that. Dr. Aaron Kimmerly is a leading expert on cold cases and runs a forensic institute at the University of South Florida. Why is that mandatory? I don't know. It's just, I mean, that's a great question. It should be. In an industry plagued by high turnover, for years she's been pushing states to require law enforcement use NamUs as its central database to report the nearly 100,000 people who remain missing in the U.S. Unlike national and state databases law enforcement is currently required to report to, this system lets users post pictures, track DNA, and it can be accessed by anyone at any time, including the public. 
who often hold the keys to unlocking cold case mysteries. It is huge, and a, and a lot of cases get solved that way because um, somebody sees something and recognizes, you know, an Afghan blanket or a sweater. To date, 10 states, including New York and California, have passed laws mandating law enforcement use NamUs, while legislation is swiftly moving through Texas and Pennsylvania. Florida remains among the majority of U.S. states that make reporting to NamUs voluntary for law enforcement. Why wouldn't a law enforcement agency use NamUs? I don't know. Detective George Lloydgren works cold cases for the Hernando County Sheriff's Department near Tampa, where NamUs has proven to be so much of a success. It's now part of the agency's standard operating procedure when reporting missing person cases. That's millions of people who can view that and look for that individual and doing the work for me. So I'm only going to benefit by them calling up and saying, hey, uh, I saw that man or that woman or I know what happened to them. With an estimated several thousand people still missing and unidentified in the Sunshine State, Lloyd Grant agrees it's time Florida make NamUs a requirement for law enforcement here. It's a no-lose situation. It doesn't take that long to input the data and you reach a wide audience. If it inevitably helps you to locate your missing person, that's what you want to do. Do you think she's still alive? For Janie Del Rosario, Resolve has yet yes. to come. I pray. One Tallahassee case in particular struck a nerve when it comes to prioritizing certain missing persons over others, especially when the person who's missing is of color. Jada Williams takes a look at a Leon County group that's examining the way police handle the search for Black Lives Matter protester Olawatoyan Salau. When I saw the missing report with her face on it, uh, that Toyan was missing, and that took five days for that to even, like, reach out to people. Tallahassee activist Trish Brown and Nigerian-American activist Alua Toyan Salau became close during a summer of protest. I saw more than passion. Um, I, saw, I saw power. But Salau's activism was cut short. There was a whole lot of situations where Miss uh, Salau was actually uh, stood up. Arrest reports from TPD says a team of more than a dozen investigators reached out to people who may have known her and checked places she may have been. TPD says, generally speaking, just because they're not heard or seen doesn't mean they're not working. In these types of cases, most of the time you will not see the officers you know, day for day, minute for minute and you may not know the totality of the investigation. Salau was found nine days after she went missing. The link to solving the case, another missing woman, 75-year-old Vicki Sims. Police say Vicki Sims's house was destroyed and burglarized on June 13th. Tallahassee police showed up after Sims's family reported her missing. They say the apartment was ransacked with things taken from inside and her car was missing. The search led them to Monday Road, where they found Sims's body along with Salau's. Hoping for more transparency and policy change, city commissioners approved the Citizens Police Review Board, bringing people like Taylor Bureau together to craft change. In one of its first cases to review, Bureau brought forth Salau's murder. Well, with policing, a lot of us think of safety. We think that that's a safety net that we can count on for when we're in crisis. Um, and Alua Toyan was in crisis in our community. And she accessed that safety net. She accessed the police as well as other social services. And each one did not protect her. And so the question is, why? Was that a policy flaw? Or was that something bigger of a design flaw for these systems that we are counting on? We should be doing everything in our power to bring them home. Thousands of missing Florida children labeled by law enforcement as runaways. The very real risk they face of becoming victims of crimes. On Dateline's Friday premiere, a missing wife, a murdered wife, and a deadly plot. She told me that if something happened to her, that Drew did it. The notorious Drew Peterson, the new prison interview, a Dateline exclusive, tonight, 9, 8 central. We are Pet Supermarket. We're by your side to lend a hand or a paw for all the fun stuff and the not so fun stuff. <laughs> wing and wing, we're in it with you.
with all the brands you know and trust. So come in. Be heard. We speak pet. Shop Pet Supermarket during our pre-Thanksgiving sale for delicious pumpkin-flavored food, toppers, and treats. Wayne Acres Ford. Get a 2021 Ford F-150 with zero interest for 72 months. The F-150 has been America's top-selling truck for 44 years in a row and has been named the 2021 North American Truck of the Year. 10th Avenue, Lake Worth, or WayneAcresFord.com. Watch now. Florida 24 Network. Connecting Florida. More than 27,000 children reported to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children in 2020 were labeled runaways. Oftentimes, these cases don't get the media attention or priority from law enforcement that stranger abductions do. Michelle Casada takes a closer look, an in-depth look, at how runaways are actually at a high risk of becoming victims of crimes. In 1981, the abduction and murder of six-year-old Adam Walsh woke America up. Over the years, I've come to realize unfortunately that it's often tragedy that brings about meaningful change uh, and the tragedy of my brother's death in 1981 changed the way we look for missing children in this country as callahan walsh's parents lives changed forever they became advocates for young victims co-founding the national center for missing and exploited children we're working on about 30,000 missing children's cases at any one time, and 92% of those are children who have run away. Over the years, Walsh has realized missing children's cases fit in different categories, and runaways are often perceived as rebellious. They see children who've run away and think this is a child who's misbehaving or being disobedient, when oftentimes this is a child who's either not safe at home, and that's why they're leaving that, that place, or they're being groomed and lured by somebody else. More than 400 children are listed as missing in Florida right now, and more than half of that number are between the ages of 13 and 17 years old, likely runaways. Walsh explains the risk is that one in six runaways is likely to become a victim of sex trafficking. We had over 17 and a half thousand reports of child sex trafficking last year alone. We know this is a huge issue in this country, and a lot of it goes under the radar because it's children who have run away, there isn't the media support. Law enforcement isn't you know, really looking for them like a stranger abducted child. And they fly under the radar and it is, they're then even more susceptible to being becoming homeless or a, a victim of violence or uh, unfortunately being trafficked as well too. Walsh says it's up to law enforcement, the media and the public to get rid of the biases against runaways and understand they're in a vulnerable position. We should be doing everything in our power to bring them home. I grew up in a family that said we need to make sure that Adam didn't die in vain. And I watched my parents every day go out there and channel their emotions, their anger, their energy to make sure that if Adam's song is to continue, then we must do the singing. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children encourages you to go to missingkids.org and take a look at all the missing children in your area. Share their poster and help bring them home. Gabby Petito's death and disappearance had the media's attention for weeks. Many other missing people got little or no coverage. A deeper look at our, the media's role in these cases and how we can do better. Okay, rappers, wrap up an AutoNation Chevrolet. Let us help you pre-order your favorite model today. Plus, we'll buy your car for more jingle. Yep, that's a wrap. What drives you drives us. AutoNation Chevrolet. Who doesn't love a Poyo party? Sunday fun day. Oh, uh, you've done enough work this year celebration. Pork, chicken, plantains, rice, beans, touchdown. Master your Friendsgiving spread and your Noche Buena. No matter how you celebrate, we're catering fresh to you. Catering from Pollo Tropical. Party's on the way. Okay, wrap it uppers. Wrap up the year in a new AutoNation Chevrolet. Shop your favorite cars and trucks arriving daily. Plus get $500 cyber cash. And that's a wrap. What drives you drives us. AutoNation Chevrolet. If you search Gabby Petito on any social media platform, you'll find thousands of posts. News outlets all across the world shared her videos and her pictures. Stasi Almos takes a closer look at the role social media played in her case and what it means in the future for others who go missing. 
It's pictures like these circulating all over social media with thousands of people across the country trying to help solve the missing person turned homicide case of Gabby Petito. I have never seen anything like this in my years of doing this work. But crowdsourcing information online isn't new, from the Boston Marathon bombing pictures and videos in 2013 to the most recent riot at the Capitol on January 6th, where social media provided the FBI with more than 200,000 photos to help catch suspects. But this case has captivated the American audience for, I think, a couple of reasons. Uh, one, that cross-country trip, I think, added to that, um, and, you know, they're very public lives on social media. We also had that body-worn camera footage. It's interesting. People have been discussing missing white woman syndrome and how it contributes to Gabby's story and her appeal to the public. And I think it's too simplistic of an explanation. Uh, and there are so many different factors that compelled people to help Gabby. And one of them being she wanted to be an influencer. She put her life out there for people to see. But social media can also hinder an investigation. The Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office told me in an email it can be a breeding ground for false information. People on social media are brilliant and they're coming at it from an outside the box perspective with creativity, but they're also not coming at it with an investigation background. According to the FBI's National Crime Information Center, nearly 550,000 missing persons were filed in 2020. 89,637 were still active by the end of the year. The National Missing and Unidentified Persons System found 40% of their reported cases are more than 20 years old. 22% are more than 10 years old. One of them I found on the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office page is a young woman who went missing from Indian Rocks Beach. In 2011, she went to break up with her boyfriend in Indian Rocks and was never seen again. And then he went to New York and was not cooperating. But she was never found and she still hasn't been found 10 years later. Do you think that she may have been found if we had the type of social media presence that we have today? Good question. Potentially, the younger generation certainly has a big digital footprint where their lives are online. They're documented. They're leaving a paper trail for anyone basically to see. And I think that in some respects can work. Uh, to law enforcement benefit. One post in this Gabby Facebook group requested that they continue efforts for other missing people once hers is solved. There have been cold cases since the start of the internet. Hopefully people will go back and try and find those missing pieces. That would be phenomenal. The 22 year old had a dream to be a social media influencer. Her legacy may be just that. We asked the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office what you should do if you want to help find others who are still missing. Their advice, if you see something unusual or suspicious, say something. Also share information only from legitimate news and law enforcement sources. And use the non-emergency hotline if you do have information, no matter how insignificant it may seem. Tens of thousands of people of color go missing every year here in the United States with little to no coverage of their disappearance in newspapers, magazines, or on television. And even though some who go missing become national household names, Anthony Hill takes a look at our role, the media's role, in covering missing person cases. Lavina Barnwell has been looking for her adult son, Pierre, for years. He went missing in Newport Ritchie in 2016. This is video of him when he was last seen in Tampa in 2018. Lavina says she would like to see more representation in the media on missing persons of color. I just noticed that you get the people, the media get quiet when you speak on um, uh, African-American, brown complected person. They get quiet, but when it comes to the white color, they speak up. Pierre is among the hundreds of thousands of people that go missing every year. But by December of 2020, the FBI had about 90,000 active missing persons cases. About 40% of those cases are of people of color. However, that number is likely much higher because when you take a closer look, the FBI doesn't differentiate between white Americans and Latinos. And then I also wanted to look at the second stage, which was not just who received news coverage, but also how much news coverage people received. Zach Summers is a criminologist, and in 2016, he published a study where for one year, 
He looked at every article reporting a missing person on CNN, Chicago Tribune, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, and the Minneapolis Star Tribune. He then looked at the demographics of who appeared in those stories and compared them to the FBI's list of missing persons. In particular, found that white girls and white women were dramatically overrepresented. He says white women accounted for about a third of the people who went missing, but accounted for about half of all of the articles written about missing persons. To be entirely honest, uh, I think all of us could probably continue to do better. Dr. Jeff Neely is a professor of journalism at the University of Tampa, and he's teaching the next generation of journalists to be more intentional in how they cover the news. We do talk quite a bit in my classes about um, the idea that diversity of coverage and diversity of content um, should not be mere tokenism. He says he teaches his students the importance of getting out and reporting on stories in different communities. Doris Truong is with the Pointer Institute for Media Studies. She says having more diversity in newsrooms is one solution to doing a better job when people of color go missing. But, you know, you might not necessarily have a wide cross-section cross of representation on your staff. And so then it's important to think about what is not well represented within our staff how can we still be responsible for thinking about those perspectives? For me personally, I was almost a statistic. Joining the ranks of the missing, the LGBTQ community remains particularly vulnerable. How those on the front lines are working to get gay youth off the streets and into a safe environment. Don't wait to put an end to junk sleep. Shop Mattress Firm's Black Friday sale and wake up a better you. Save up to $500 on adjustable Tempur-Pedic mattress sets, plus get a $300 instant gift good towards sleep accessories. Only at Mattress Firm, the number one Tempur-Pedic retailer. This year, let Ford help make your holidays even brighter. Get holiday ready with Ford. Now, get 0% financing for 60 months, plus 500 bonus cash on select vehicles. Only at your local Ford dealer. The Black Friday sale is going on now at Brands Mart USA. Don't wait to put an end to junk sleep. Shop Mattress Firm's Black Friday sale and save up to $500 when you get a king bed for the price of a queen or a queen for a twin. Plus, get a free adjustable base with qualifying Sealy purchase. Unjunk your sleep only at Mattress Firm. Advocates say the LGBTQ youth are particularly at risk when it comes to homelessness or missing persons cases. Tori Dunnan has more on the action being taken to tackle what some are referring to as an epidemic. Grew up in rural northeast Georgia, a place that, like, we barely had a stoplight. <laughs> Behind Dylan Brooks' happy demeanor and smile... I was almost a statistic. ...is a story that's not so simple. I was outed my senior year of high school, and because it was such a small-knit community, I had to go and tell my parents before it got around, like, and Mama found out through the grocery store line. Like, I could already feel that there was things that were going to go down, and, like, there were conversations I could already feel that my father was going to have about, like, oh, like, he needs to go, no child of mine's going to be gay. Now he leans on that experience to help others at the Compass LGBTQ Community Center in Lake Worth. And a park bench, or, like, they're taking showers at the beach, like, that's no place for a 18 to 20 five-year-old to like live and try to thrive it's just not right when youth come in identifying as homeless brooks calls himself the point person as soon as they start identifying within the lgbtq plus community that's when their family automatically kicks them out here at the compass community center in lake worth they say they took in two homeless youth individuals within the same day and tell us it's an example of an epidemic that's happening with the lgbtq community that shouldn't be this day and age. It should not be happening, but it still is. Julie Seaver. All of them are facing identity crises. The executive director of the Compass Center says the problem is real. What comes to mind when you think of cases involving missing people in the LGBTQ community? Youth, young adults, LGBTQ youth are 
120 times more susceptible to homelessness. And most cases, it's due to family conflict. Shedding light on all members of the LGBTQ community, but highlighting one in particular. Our trans people are the most marginalized, the most discriminated against. They have the highest chance of being victimized. The Compass Center partners with community groups and law enforcement. We do know that 40% of LGBTQ youth will experience either homelessness or couch hopping. 40% is a significant number. It really is. The hope is for a better future. Love and acceptance in helping your, your children become who they are. While acknowledging the problem still exists. Sadly, there will be other Gabby Petitos and other Floridians who go missing. But will law enforcement, the media, the public take notice if they don't fit the Petito profile? Changes can be made. Florida can opt into the national database. And newsrooms can pay better attention to when the disenfranchised disappear. And then there's social media. Could it be the tool that brings the missing home to their loved ones? Right now, there are so many families out there still searching for answers for those who are still missing. And their search continues. For all the script stations in Florida and all my co-anchors this evening, good night. <laughs>